All right, uh, this is the third uh, review video for Project 5 midterm. Um, and on this video, we've got, who do we have on this video? We've got Zach, we have Kaylee, Caesar, Oscar, and the King. And so first out of the gate, we've got um, Zach and these are looking really good. Uh, you, you got the right idea in terms of capturing you know, some kind of an emotion. Um, your compositions are a little bit similar. You're kind of sort of stylistically handling them in all the same kind of way. Um, and and so I'd, I'd like to see you sort of explore a little bit outside of the kind of the amorphous sort of circular blobular shapes, um, you know, with the highlight and the darker colors and so on. I'd rather, well, I wouldn't rather, I mean, I think these are fine, but I'd like to see you sort of branch out a little bit further <clears throat> into something stylistically different. Um, I would also like to see you work with the Illustrator tools, even if, you know, you put it into, Illust into Photoshop eventually, because um, I still want you to know how to work the tools because we're going to want to use them when we get into some of the projects that are coming up. So that being said, it would be good if you could... Um, you could start in Illustrator at least and then bring it into Photoshop or even just stay in Illustrator and play around with it some. Um, okay, because, you, you know, I, we, I can see that you can do this. And so that's all fine. And, and these are good, you know, I mean, they're they're fine. This is this is a nice design, you know. Um, you know, I like what you're doing with the composition and with the color. Um, you're kind of dealing with this essentially the same moody palette with a kind of a purple blue with a warm highlight. Um, so I'd like to see you explore palettes more as well. So that's the, the three things I would say. Work, work a little bit more with Illustrator. Get out of the blobby stuff um, and try working with some more linear elements and some of the cool effects that you can do with, with stroke effects and, you know, and then, of course, with the blend modes and so on. Um, and so that's where I'd like to see you go with this, okay? So, and of course, uh, also, obviously, play with color palettes, you know, just so you got that kind of moody thing going on. So let's see if we can, can you know, make it happy, you know, or, you know, something upbeat. Okay, so, um, you know, just think about that, okay? And if, you know, if you're going for hope, you know, hope is a very, you know, uplifting kind of design, um, emotion. And this is a rather somber palette, so you might want to think about if that's the path you're going down, you might really think about a different background color at the very least, right? So those are some things I'd like you to explore, okay? Okay, is that good? Nice job, he's looking good. All right, next we have um, 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 Kaylee. Kaylee, these are coming along. Okay, so uh, let's see what we got going on here. craziness man it's pretty intense <laughs> pretty intense um so let's see um th it works i mean i don't know that you could do much more with this particular design um you could certainly explore some color some um in terms of the shapes and the the linear kind of moray effect that you're getting on right there is sort of you know it's cool um you know adding a a band of color in the background sort of stabilizes it a little bit. <clears throat> so I think these are going, you know, in the right direction. Um, this one might be getting a little bit on the busy side. It might be a little hard to manipulate. And so when you when you get into that, um, yeah, there's a lot going on. So you probably want to simplify this and really start exploring the idea of um, you know, the softness of the shapes rather than everything being hard edged. You can get away with some things in Illustrator that make it look more painterly, and I might explore that as well as the linear effects that you can do. Um, keep in mind also you can start in Illustrator and you can take it into Photoshop and then do something cool with that. So there's always that back and forth duality, and you can do the same thing. You can start in Photoshop and end it in Illustrator and do some fun stuff there too. Um, this is a nice design. I like what you're doing with the colors. This is good. Um, and so, yeah, I like what I'm seeing here. Nice palettes. These are fun. 
So same thing here, I would just, you know, maybe explore color a little bit more. Um, you might, what else? I like what you're doing there, that's all good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are coming along fine. I might just explore color more with that. Um, and then I might come up with one more, you know, something that is perhaps something between this extreme hard edge and this nice soft painterly. See if you can do something with lines. I'd like to see you explore the, line, the linear qualities of things um, and sort of see what you can do with that because it's important when we get to the next projects that understanding stroke effects are going to be pretty important. So that's where I'd like to see you go with that. All right, Kaylee. So these are looking good. All right. Oh, and we've got uh, da, 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 Caesar. Okay. Okay, I know we saw some of these. Whoa, radical. Um, we saw some of these on uh, on last week, and so um, it's kind of intense, actually. Um, so, what do we want to do here? This is good. I like where that's going. Um, this is probably of this kind of this batch of designs. Actually, this one, this one, this one. I'm trying to see what else we got here. Why don't you work with like you know I, I, maybe this design here? I think that's going good. I'd be careful with those weird background pet textures, though. You know, could they really add anything to the design? You know, it's kind of like, well, you got a neat kind of that whole swirl thing going on, you know, and then some interesting effects and distortions on that. <clears throat> and then you add this, you know, very hard edge, very defined background, and it kind of messes up with the whole sort of organic nature of this design here. So I would say maybe work with that design and work with color on that. Um, this is cool, and I might work with color on this one. I like, I like, I like working with this one. I think this is cool, and again, I think color will work well. I would also explore not having this be a, a, a symmetrical design. You know, right now everything is kind of right in the middle, right? So maybe take that paint splatter and sort of move it off to the side, or. Um, you know, grow it off to one end or maybe have another one and off center it or something like that, you know, sort of push that a little bit more. But that one's definitely worth exploring a little bit further. So that's three. And then this one is pretty intense. Um, it's actually hurting my eyes just looking at it, but it's, I'm sick, man. And now you're making me crazy. Whoa. Um, this is worth working with, um, but it's definitely something that you want to be careful with your eyes with. <laughs> so you might explore that one. I like these linear elements as they go through and maybe some exploration on those would be kind of fun. Um, I don't know that these little drippy deals coming from the top are making a big impression on the overall design. Um, so I might just say, let's, let's get rid of the goop. And uh, let's keep the design more at the pure level. You are still kind of playing around with that um, that swirl, you know, uh, whirlpool kind of effect that you're using up in this design here. So I might maybe explore something other than that kind of style with the design, but um, but keep the keep the the look and feel, I guess. Um, and then, you know, playing around with disappearing boundaries. You've got vibrating boundaries dialed in pretty well there, so I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> push that one any further. Um, but, yeah, that might be something to explore there, too. Okay, so that is the ones that I would pick. Okay, so I work with that. Without, actually, this one, that one, this one, and that one. And that's plenty. Okay, I think that's Caesar, right? Uh, where am I at here? Caesar, yeah, yeah, Caesar. Okay, I, I get lost where when I I'm talking for too long. Okay, Caesar, nice job. These are looking good. All right, and then next we have um, Oscar. And these are looking pretty cool. Looking pretty cool. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. Okay. Um, This is definitely coming along. This is fun. I like what's going on. It's got a light, kind of a nice sort of 
kind of pop edge to it going on. That's kind of cool, sort of fun. I'd explore color with that one. You might explore um, blend and um, transparencies on these as well. It looks like you might you might already be doing that. Sometimes, yeah, it looks like you are actually. So I guess you're doing okay in that department. And then, you know, explore more subtle color palettes as well and just sort of see where that goes. Oh, and then let's see. Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> Either one of these could work. Um, explore now the softness of things. See if you can't get some... Um, some slight blurs or some glows or some other effects on some of the shapes to kind of maybe soften them up a little bit, see what happens with that. I'd also like to see you work a little bit more with lines, um, exploring the linear qualities. There's a lot you can do with that. <clears throat> so something in between one of these three is the one that you probably want to work with. This one might be a shade simple. This one might be about right and then this one might be a little busy I don't know it depends it depends on what you do with the color um, a lot of these are pretty pretty hard-edged what's this one doing here oh, this one's kind of fun uh, this has some potential um, you might make this slightly more complex perhaps another couple of these shapes in the background to kind of give it a little more depth and maybe a little bit of overlap and underlap with some transparencies um, to try and get the composition to be a little bit more, uh, have more depth, a little less flat. Um, some scale variations so that you have some smaller ones and maybe some really large ones, so some contrast in the scale would be kind of good. Um, and of course, playing with color. So that one's a good one. Um, Weird. Huh. And then let's see up here. This one sort of grabbed my eye as well. Um, and this definitely has some potential. It's similar to the one at the bottom, but it's definite, different enough that I think it would be worth exploring. I think the main thing here is that on the ones that I've been seeing, you're working with some pretty bright color palettes. I wonder why it's doing that. That is so weird. Huh. It's like some of the colors are not, I don't know, whatever. Um, is that the same as this one? Not quite, not quite. Okay. Oh, man. And then this, it's like, that doesn't look anything like it when it's in the small thumbnail. That is so weird. Huh. So let's see. Wow, that is so weird. I've never seen that happen before. Huh. Well, there you go. It might be because they're AIs and something is selected. I don't know. It's hard to say. But um, but that works too. Um, so my suggestion would be to really work with color, okay? Um. Like, look how dark these are on the thumbnails. And then these are fine. Oh, that is the weirdest thing. Strange. Strange, strange, strange. Okay, so... Let's see. Um, yeah. So I guess that my main thing here would be to say to um, explore color palettes that are more like... Um, analogous palettes and possibly complementary or split complement. Um, you're kind of working with triads and uh, tetrads and triads that are fairly far apart. And so when you do that, the colors obviously become, they're hard to control because you've got so many colors going on. I wonder what happens if I do this. Oh, interesting. Huh. Strange. So I see what I'm saying though. I mean, these are all kind of these sort of bright tetrad color palettes. So I'd like to see you kind of pull it together a little bit more and work a little bit more quietly with your colors and not quite so bright. Work a little bit more with some of the more subtle subtlety things that are going on. Okay, see so actually like this one in its thumbnail is actually better <laughs> than when I zoom it in, right? Because now that pink really jumps forward. Whereas now when it's in the contact sheet, 
it kind of falls back into the background and allows some of these shapes to become a little more dominant. So, you know, keep that in mind, okay? Kind of play around with a little bit more subtle palettes. And um, and those are the ones I would say work with. I like this one, and I, we, I already said which one I thought I'd work with, so. <clears throat> What's this one doing? Yeah, probably a little too much going on there. Okay, all right, so um, Oscar, these are looking good. You're in good shape, nice job. All right, and uh, looking, let's see what you're doing here. Okay, so we have really about one composition going on here, so you need to really create a couple more, obviously. Um, what's happening now is that it appears that, hmm, let's see, what are we doing here? Maybe when you work on your next compositions, try to work with the same kind of shape only in repetition or in similarity. So rather than having a line and a circle, you know, and a spiral and then a rectangle and an oval and another oval, there's a lot going on. So maybe let's try to simplify a little bit so that we don't have so many things going on. The next thing I might suggest is to not go down this texture path. You know, you're definitely kind of getting sucked down that, you know, that toxic goo texture and it's, um, it, it, it can, it can work, but it's a very dominant shape, uh, texture that it really kind of jumps forward no matter what you do with it. It definitely wants to be in kind of in your face. And so I might just kind of work with maybe some gradients and some very light, um, light textures rather than going down that, in, down that, um, that texture palette route. There's other effects that you can use that are more subtle. Um, so you might <clears throat> you might be careful in using that. And then, like I said, working with a similar a similar shape in repetition or in similarity, and um, and then and then using overlap and ink effects, uh, you know, blend modes and so on to uh, to create your effects that way. Also working with lines. Um, and the linear effects that you can do with strokes. Okay, so that's why I might suggest you go. All right, um, and then uh, and then you know you've got two more to do and a couple days to do it. So let's see what you can do. Okay, you guys, nice job.